Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com here with Red Pedal Bastion, Hard Mode, Secret Bosses, Veteran Version, everything you need to know. And we're going to kick off the action by clearing out the first set of ads and getting to the Secret Boss. And I'm going to go over the Secret Bosses along with the Bosses and Mechanics. So this will not cover everything in detail about this dungeon, but the most important parts. Essentially, what you're going to do is clear out these areas, and there's going to be three pedestals everyone will need to stand on at once, which will unlock a portal, will allow you to go into a secret area, kill a secret boss, and get a much needed buff. Trust me, you're going to want to do this, if, especially if you're trying to do hard modes on each and every boss. So after you kill these mobs, clear it out, this is what the portal is going to look like. As I stand on, it lights up blue. Very, very simple stuff here. And here coming up is a picture of where you can find the portal along with the three pedestals you'll need to stand on. Stand on them all simultaneously, portal opens up. Portal up, we're going in, and you'll find a very simple and easy boss to kill. You'll have to kill some in adds initially and activate the crystal which will spawn the boss. After you spawn the boss, simply kill it. The only thing to note here is you want to taunt it right away so it doesn't heavy attack your group. There's some moderate damage on the ground. Common sense stuff here. Red is bad. Stay out of the way. Kill it. And especially taunt those range adds as they can pepper your group. Some of them can and cannot be pulled. But just make sure you're taunted at least. You keep the pressure off your adds. Keep it faced away. Get out of red circles. Easy. The reason you're going to want to do this is you're going to get a permanent buff throughout the encounter that's going to increase your max magic and max stamina by 10% as well as healing an ally summons a spirit up to three spirits can be active at once. Now we're going to activate hard mode and get to the first boss in kind of a weird encounter to be honest. One that turns you into a goat and I'm not talking about the greatest of all time. This boss is your normal standard fare with one interesting mechanic. So you're going to see the usual suspects in PvE. A big old heavy attack. Make sure you block it. Some ground effect AoEs. One in particular that will summon and kind of stay stationary and also shoot out other AoEs as well. The only tip I can give you here is red is bad. Pull it out and make sure the melee DPS can get behind it. Next mechanic up, at random, one of your party will be selected to be a goat. Not the greatest of all time, an actual goat, okay? You can do one of two things while you're a goat. One, you can feed off the sweet rolls in this green circle. Two, you can attack a portal that has not yet spawned on this image. So if you were the goat, go around and get those sweet rolls because it'll restore a small portion of stamina magic and increase damage healing done or increase movement speed. You're going to get one of the buffs and you're kind of just playing out these mechanics until the portal spawns. Also, there are going to be some frogs or dangerous NPCs that can be changed in. So just deal with the ads like you normally would. Next mechanic up, you'll actually see the chaos gate and or portal in the top of my screen. So what's going to happen is if you are the goat, you're going to go up there and use a synergy key, which will allow more damage, more damage per second, and you're going to want to destroy it. Otherwise, you're going to see a continuous flood of day draw NPCs. These Daedroth aren't exactly super and powerful or something like that, but you're going to want to deal with them and get rid of that portal. You can also just sit there and just nuke the boss if you have enough DPS, but I highly recommend you as the GOAT go over to the portal, deal with it, your DPS follow and take it out. And that's really all the mechanics of this fight. So beyond a really hard hitting heavy attack for me as the tank and beyond the being a little critter goat, you don't have to worry about too much in this specific fight. The only thing I can caution you on is if your healer turns into the goat, it could be a problem for you. So making sure you have some type of self survivability or as a tank, if you have a little bit of off hill can get you through in the pinch. But when in doubt, just go pick up those sweet rolls and it could give you a buff. So very simple mechanics, hang in there, has a bag of HP, just a lot of stuff on the ground, but you shouldn't have a problem with this. And it's the easiest of the hard modes in the new dungeon because the rest of them are not so easy.
Some other advice is positioning and making sure that you quickly position the boss outside of the, the circle along with making sure you stack on top of the portal if you can to damage the boss and the portal simultaneously along with pulling and changing in the ads. They're very simple tank mechanics, but you want the most uptime as possible for your DPS. That way you can get this thing down as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Also, I didn't find the need for a defensive ultimate throughout this. Even learning the fights, I didn't find myself using magma armor at all. So if you are playing the role of a tank and or a healer, I would go with all offensive ultimates, at least after you've done this a couple of times. And that's just about it. We'll finish it up on to the next. boss down and we're going to clear out some rooms and you're going to get to another secret boss and here is the image of where you can find it note that one is downstairs you need to stand on one is upstairs and one is on the main floor so again three people stand on it, it summons a portal which is in blue on the main floor you're going to go through that and you're going to do the secret boss number two, which is another very, very easy, not very intensive boss. So deal with the ads, click the thing in the middle and it'll spawn a Daedroth looking character with a bunch of little mini ads. You should not have a problem getting this one down, just making sure to taunt all of the mobs change them in if they're not there hit a war horn delete it this will give you increased max health by 10 percent and a really cool fun effect which is holding block summons flame damage so yes holding block will summon flame damage and it ticked for around 2,500 per second on me as a tank and this is the effect look it looks cool so at least hold block and see what you get it's a fun effect now you're going to continue making your way through various corridors to our next boss and you're going to activate the hard mode and this boss in particular is not that troublesome just has a ton of hp so be patient and you can recover if someone goes down during this encounter first mechanic up is an annoying one and as soon as you taunt it's going to kick out this wave of energy and it will stun you and hit you very hard i had to find that out the hard way about 400 times so as soon as you range taunt make sure to block and or get out of the way of that or it will stun you and that's kind of a theme that you're going to have to deal with the rest of the time and this mechanic here the heavy attack and a kick even though if you block it it will still knock you back so you have to be aware of your positioning specifically because of this reason so if there's red on the ground and you're holding block and you get knocked back and you're wondering why that's why it will still knock you back Next mechanic up is just a big old red circle. Stay out of it and watch your positioning, especially as melee, because if this thing goes down and you're in it, you will die. Next mechanic, the boss will slam his shield down and charge whoever's holding aggro. Make sure to block and or dodge this, not too intensive. Next, the boss will jump and leap up and attack someone else. So this needs to be dodged and or avoided. Typically, the furthest person away is going to get this and it's telegraphed pretty easily once you get the hang of it. Next, at various HP uh, percentages, you're going to have an archer ad that's going to spawn, and the boss on hard mode is going to get a bubble where it's in, uh, immune to damage. So during this phase, the tank taunts the boss and keeps it away. You're going to have a lot of ground effect AoEs going on in the ground, so the boss is going to channel that. You're going to see these mines that come out that stun you as well, and the archer transits and moves around quite frequently. In short, make sure the DPS prioritizes the archer and you, the tank, turns the boss away while maintaining aggro on the archer. And remember, the boss will still do his charge mechanic and leap towards someone, so make sure to block and or dodge as that appears. So once you get the archer down, just realize it will come back and quite, come back quite frequently on hard mode. So it's something you're just going to have to constantly deal with going to the archer, damaging it, killing it, get that shield down and then going back towards the boss. 
This fight is very long because of the HP the boss has and the immunity phase being so long. However, it's pretty easy to recover. So if someone makes a mistake, if you miss a charge, if you miss a block or something goes down, you can recover pretty quickly because there's not a whole lot of adds going on beyond those normal two. So it's a forgiving fight. It's just a very, very, very long one. And this footage is on the public test server and it gets pretty buggy later on and we'll fast forward through some of those parts. So you can see the archer boss is back up. So I would not necessarily stack the boss on top of the archer. That's a bad play by me because you can see they put a big, huge, massive red circle down and now the melee DPS cannot get to it. So as a tank, position it away if you can, that way that big AOE ground effects are not hampering your team's DPS. Additionally, you're gonna wanna point the boss along with the archer away from your group because that AOE cleave damage will lower the DPS. Also, you want your team to get the backstab or passive if possible as well. So there's a lot going on and positioning is very important. You're gonna have to be quite mobile. You're gonna have a lot of resources kind of roaming around taunting both and range taunt can be very, very helpful here. So in this footage, I'm using Destructive Clinch, and you can see they jump to one of our healers and goes down, but it's just the boss up. So I can heal independently, no big deal, and you can recover pretty easily. So we've been going for what seems like an eternity, and yes, we have another ad, which is a melee, and basically needs to be bashed and, and or rubbed, and it will kind of empower the boss. So another thing you're going to want to kind of focus on. Um, this one in particular can be damaged both simultaneously. So you're going to kind of taunt them. And during one of the fights, the, the, the melee will run away just like that. And if you don't bash it, it's going to be very, very problematic. So range DPS in particular can use skills like crushing shock from the destruction staff skill line and it'd be very, very helpful. And then at this HP percentage, now the archer's back. And now you have the melee empowering the boss along with the archer giving the boss a bubble and this becomes quite problematic. So as you can see, if you do not prioritize the uh, ads, this will become very overwhelming. So drop the house when those ads appear, allowing you to get back on the boss, push its HP down and get this fight over as quickly as possible because it's a very long one if you haven't got that message already. So those are the mechanics of the fight, and it's just rinse and repeat, focusing on the ads, positioning, keeping the boss pointed away, and so on. It's pretty forgiving in terms of recovery, just making sure to bash the melee, stacking them both on top. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this so it doesn't take 14 hours to finish this fight. Some general tips for you, and in case you're unaware, the Destructing Staff Ice Staff is very helpful right now because it gives major maim out for its Destructive Clinch ability. So it's quite useful when you're taunting with the Destruction Staff as a tank. It's going to lower the damage significantly and you'll really feel it. As well as pairing it with Heroic Slash from Sword and Shield, lowering damage even further. That's about 15% damage reduction from the boss and the adds if you hit them with both. Not to mention the ultimate gen that you're going to receive. So when you're facing hard-hitting mobs like this and or bosses, those two skills will be very, very helpful. Note there is a downside with the Destructive Clinch as a tank, and that's the 15 meter radius. That will come into play later on in this fight in particular with the archer. So you don't want to stack the bubble boss on top of the archer and that 15 meter radius can be a bit tricky. So you're going to have to work on it as I was working on it in this video. A couple different options for range interrupts, uh, like I mentioned earlier, crushing shock from the destruction skill line and then one from a uh, bow as well can help you out tremendously to not rush over and interrupt when you clearly at range clear across the map because if you don't, you're just going to be end wipe city. Some other tips I would give you while you're learning this fight, you'll see I'm using Engine Guardian and also I'm using Revealing Flare on my front bar, which will give you 10% damage reduction via Major Protection. So when I'm learning the fights and I'm unfamiliar with the mechanics, what I do is spec heavily into damage reduction for the boss and damage reduction among myself along with resource sustain. Once I learn these mechanics, it might sound obvious, but the next step is, well, 
to step up the damage. So then I would drop sets like Engine Guardian for Selfish Resource for Stain for like Encratus Behemoth or something else that adds damage ultimate something to my team to get these mobs down faster. The same thing with uh, ultimates as well. As I stand in here, we're trying to figure this out because it doesn't really match what we've done in the past. So that's kind of buggy on the public test server with this footage. But the point remains the same. As you're learning these fights, go a little bit more resource sustained, selfish, uh, less damage. And then you can go all out damage with aggressive war horns, powerful assault, all of the gear that optimizes your team's damage that I have on the T3 build. But nothing wrong with learning. There is no DPS check here. So if this fight takes you a half an hour and you have multiple deaths and you have to recover, no big deal. Take it slow. The mechanics are quite simple and it's going to take a lot of time and concentration due to the boss's HP. And that'll wrap up this fight. And as we're finishing this fight, uh, it's been like a half an hour now, we're going to move on to another secret boss in another area where you have to hit three pedestals and go to a portal. So clear out some trash, grab a pedestal, sit on it, and here's where they are. So three one portal spawns in the middle of the room. Very simple stuff here. These are not hidden very much. So you're going to get down here and it's more of the same. You got a secret boss here, the Twilight, and it kind of reminds me of a little non-intimidating Lord Warden. The only mechanic to watch out for here is exactly what Lord Warden does, which is kind of um, target one player, and then the tank has to get in front of it, like right there. So as long as you get in front of it and the person stops moving so you can absorb the damage, this is not really intensive at all. And now you're going to get weapon and spell critical increase by 10% and then a heavy attack mechanic as well. So now we're all ramped up and ready for the final boss. And the final boss, activate hard mode, it has a ton of HP and is very, very difficult for melee. So we brought a Stamplar in here, Sarsis, he does a good job, but it is tough for melee DPS and you're going to see why. The mechanics are somewhat simple. There's just a lot going on. The first one here is a kick. And this is kind of the recurring theme is even if I'm holding block, this kick will do a couple different things. Bang, it'll knock me back and stun me. And then they'll have a wave like the other boss along with an AOE cleave. All these three things happen in a short window. And when I was learning this fight, if I did not block, dodge or avoid it somehow, it was game over. Now the boss is going to travel, and this is a really important mechanic, is the interrupt. You're going to need to get inside of that shield. If you do not, it's going to impale one of your teammates and kill them. So bashing and having high mobility to get across the map is super important. You see the boss puts the sword down, and then all of a sudden, boom, huge crystals come out and impale and take a big chunk out of uh, our DPS. That is the mechanic that will one-shot you if you do not interrupt, but you can survive it otherwise. More kicks, more cleaves, and you can see being behind is very important or you will eat it. So tanks position them away from your group. Group members be on the back because there's a lot of cleave AOE damage in front of you. And then it's more of the same until we get the HP down a bit. And so the boss is going to travel inside of this area and put down a bunch of red circles that will explode. Obviously red is bad or pink on my screen. So be outside of them or you're going to die. Also, they're going to leave a residual um, residue that will absolutely delete DPS or non tanks. And as a tank, you're going to have to constantly deal with that kick. Next mechanic up is we're going to have some additional ads that will have, you guessed it, an interrupt mechanic as well. So one are going to be on the opposite end of each other. What I found helpful to do is grab the boss and stack on top of one specifically and have a range DPS kind of primarily focus on another one. As long as you keep them bash and get them down pretty quickly, you can get this down easily. So we lost someone here. It's very, very challenging, especially for melee DPS. So be aware of that. What gets me problems and why I died learning this fight was the kick that would stun and knock me back. So it's extremely hard on positioning. You have to basically know geometry and where you are parked. Otherwise, you'll get kicked back into one of those circles and die. 
But as long as those ads go down, you can recover an interval. So it seems like this fight particularly has time-based uh, mechanics that if you get past them, it's not that bad. So as long as those ads go down, you're controlling it, you're aware, you can recover if someone dies. So don't panic if someone goes down. It's not necessarily a group wipe. And we're going to get to some more mechanics here, but dealing with the kick as a tank is your number one hard point because it's going to stun you and knock you back, and we'll see here in a minute why that's problematic. So the boss is going to do another mechanic here soon, which is going to go in the middle and then kind of charge whoever has aggro, typically. So me, I'm going to just avoid it, simply move out of the way. It's pretty easily telegraphed. Now we're getting to the hard one. You're going to see these lines come in, similar to something like Fang's Lair or something else. They're not one-shots necessarily, but they'll stun you. So now you have to deal with the kick knockback into these walls. There seems to be a sweet spot that you can stand in on both of them. So they're going to come from that side, and now they're going to come from behind me. So they rotate in where they come from. So you'll see them come from behind me, and boop, little Deltia gets stunned. And see the kick mechanic, if it happened at that time with my block down, because I was stunned, I'd be dead. So that's the tricky part. Now you're going to have to deal with the lines. You're going to have to deal with two ads. And it's just going to be a lot to deal with, not to mention even more stuff on the ground spinning. So melee DPS nightmare here. You can find kind of a sweet spot in the middle between both of these. So you don't have to actually move that much. It took me some time to kind of find that and position my camera so I'm aware of where these come from. So just take your time with it. It'll be a little bit, but they'll go away pretty soon. And so you only have a short window to deal with them. So they come back here. I dodge through them. What I found is helpful is saving defensive ultimates until I kind of knew instinctively where they were going to be. So if my block went down or I was in trouble, I'd hit a magma armor as a Dragonite tank, which would kind of get me through screwing up on that mechanic and or one-shotting my team. Because when we were learning this, that kick combined with those uh, waves were problematic. Also, if someone goes down here, it's going to be very hard to res. So just try to get the boss whittled down to skip these mechanics. And now we're going to get to a whirling uh, AoE. Don't hit the boss, obviously. After this, you can see basically the entire map is full of spinning tornadoes, but the lines have dissipated. So that will give you a breather in dealing with those, but you're going to have to deal with the kick as a tank. And you can see I didn't park myself in the right position, so I almost got knocked back there and probably could have died. So I would not risk a uh, dropping block frequently during those kicks because it's not worth it and you'll die a lot of the times. Again, the ads are going to spawn during this phase and it's going to be a lot to deal with. So I'd have one person specifically focus on one in the back, at least interrupting them. Typically a ranged DPS along with uh, the tank parking your boss on top of one to focus down. If you get one down quickly, the fight goes a lot better. And that's basically the mechanic. So you're going to have a lot of stuns. You're going to have a lot of crap on the ground. You're going to have to move. You're going to have to bash and coordinate those things together. And see, I've missed that as well. So it's just a lot to deal with. What really helps in this specific fight is defensive ultimates and positioning. Also, high mobility. Even me as a tank, I have to run clear across the map. So you can use something like Elusive Mist, Race Against Time, or have someone else kind of hit it. But it's going to take some time to learn where those lines come from and the rotation that they go on along with safe spots to park. And then during this last little bit, it's basically all the mechanics in one. So you're going to have melee, you're going to have crap on the ground, you're going to have ads you're going to have to deal with and bash and interrupt. Drop the house during this time, around 20%, because if you can get the ads down, then it's not that much to deal with. But having to run and clear across the map and deal with the ads and the boss interrupt is a lot. So make sure just to drop the house during that phase if you can to get through it and push past it. Because now it's pretty easy beyond this point. And so now we're just going to continue on and get the boss down and follow the exact same mechanics. So I hope you got something out of this video. It's quite difficult for melee DPS and... Probably one of the reasons why a lot of folks don't play it, because there's such a huge advantage playing a Magic, Nightblade, or a Sork. But you can do it. Sarsis did it as well. So you're just going to have to follow the same mechanics over and over and over due to the massive amount of HP. 
But I will say this, Dungeons and Elder Scrolls Online are absolutely incredible with great incentives, very challenging hard modes now, but this is pretty easy on veterans. So I'd highly recommend doing veteran to kind of see what it's like, get the feel for it, and then crank it up to hard mode because it will add some unique and interesting things and really test your build. Again, there is no DPS check here, so if you take a very long time to do this like we did, that's no problem. It's all about getting that clear, getting that gear, and having fun. So we have someone go down here, but we can get back up no problem because the ads are down. We're not going to panic. So me as a tank, I always go selfish and survival first when I'm learning it because if someone goes down, I don't need a bunch of healing. I can do it myself. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you all get your clears, get your gear, and enjoy this dungeon because they keep getting better and better. Thanks for watching.